My friends, I speak to you in the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. The season of Epiphany, the one in which we find ourselves currently in, is traditionally understood as the time of the liturgical year when we consider who Jesus is. The word itself points to this, to reveal or manifest. We meet Jesus Christ, God made flesh, at Christmas, and then we slowly learn about him through the stories of his ministry and teaching throughout the season of Epiphany. Yet there is another aspect of Epiphany that can easily be overlooked. Our learning of who Jesus is reveals very much who we are and what we are about. Jesus reveals not only the love of God and God's way of life, he exemplifies the very life to which you and I are called to embrace. Jesus is not only divine, but human as well. And we, who have been formed and fashioned into the image of God, are called to embrace and live our vocation. An early father of the church, Irenaeus of Lyon, writing in the second century, pointed to this when he wrote, God became human so that we may become what God is himself. In Jesus, we find our true purpose and our true mission. I hadn't terribly thought about this much over the past few weeks. It wasn't until I started to reflect upon my sermons from the past two Sundays that I realized I was unintentionally pointed to this in my preaching. A few weeks ago, I spoke about how we are to be like Jesus and give of ourselves as gift to others. I shared at the time that when we break bread, we say and do as Jesus does. Take this, all of you, and eat it. For this is my body. All of us join in that. I then spoke about how we are to cast out our nets out into the deep, even when we feel discouraged and disheartened by the difficulties and challenges of life. Finally, last week, I wrestled and reflected upon Jesus' teaching of the Beatitudes and how he calls us to act now and to serve the poor, the hungry, and the marginalized. To be the very living body of Jesus Christ in the world, living and acting today. We, like Jesus, are to go to the places of pain and suffering, and love and care for God's beloved, poor, and disenfranchised. This week, Jesus takes us a step further in his teaching about how we are to live life. Although he seems to outline a way of life we are to embrace, to love and care for all, including our enemies, there's some, something much greater going on in this gospel text. Jesus isn't simply calling us to live the golden rule. He's inviting us to live a life of radical generosity well beyond ordinary comprehension. As he says in the gospel, anyone can do good and love others. But as disciples, we are called to do so much more. We are not simply to be good people. We are to be gracious and merciful as God is gracious and merciful. We are to love without counting the cost and without fear of what the demands of that love may have upon our life. And this is a critical distinction, an important one at that. Particularly in our own time, when there's much talk about freedom and individual rights. 
In recent weeks, we've seen and heard dozens of protesters demanding our provincial and federal leaders to rescind all pandemic health protocols for the sake of their own individual freedom and rights. We're told that vaccine requirements and limitations upon gatherings have been un an unnecessary burden to some of our citizens. In the words of some protesters, the freedom has been taken away and it's time to give it back to them. While a part of me sympathizes with the protesters, I'm personally tired of, as I'm personally tired of the endless closures and restrictions, as well as ever-changing public health guidelines. However, I can't accept their arguments or demands. In fact, I find it all very unchristian and not very Christ-like. What we've seen in recent weeks is not the way that Christ calls us to, Today's gospel makes that perfectly clear. And let me explain. It is often said that all religions share one thing in common, the golden rule. Namely, to treat others as, wish, as we wish to be treated. Although such an affirmation of what we have in common is comforting, and quite frankly releases us from making any bold claims, it fails to fully acknowledge each religion's interpretation of that rule. Although many religions, Christianity included, seem to affirm the golden rule, most traditions invite their followers to a more complex ethic of life. While today's gospel seems to suggest Jesus adhered to such a principle, for Jesus simply says as much, he calls his disciples to something more. A few lines after reiterating the golden rule, Jesus questions the underlying ethic by asking his disciples a question. If you do good to those who do good to you, what credit is that to you? For even sinners do the same. Instead, he suggests we ought not to just treat others as we wish to be treated, but to generously and lavishly show love, mercy, and compassion to all people, and to do so without expecting anything in return. Once again, Jesus draws us back to a theme we've heard repeated over and over these past few weeks, namely, that we are to give us of ourselves totally and completely out of love for others, particularly the stranger, the enemy, and without any regard for what we make it back in return. Not only that, Jesus reminds us we might just suffer and die for our giving of ourselves to others. Jesus challenges us to go beyond just doing what is commonly expected, but to live as he lives and be willing to die as he died. Jesus' way of life is a costly one at that. And herein lies the problem with our modern freedom fighters and Christian political zealots. Their logic is that we should simply treat everyone as we like to be treated and that we should have the liberty to live our lives as we wish. And this is actually completely opposite of what Jesus is saying here. Their focus is upon the self. It is entirely narcissi narcissistic. It's all about what I want and when I want it. And in some extreme forms, there's even a total and complete disregard of others, as was made evident in the violence scene in Ottawa and elsewhere. This is not freedom. And it certainly is not the freedom that Jesus calls us to. Rather, the Christian understanding of freedom is the freedom to do the good. That's a big distinction. In Christianity, freedom is not about doing whatever you like. In Christianity, it's all about having the ability to do the good. 
The entire New Testament makes it clear that true freedom comes from when we give of ourselves to others and when we live in holiness and righteousness. Ironically, we are less free when we do whatever we want and without consideration of others. We become consumed with ourselves and we lose sight of others. Funny enough, this is actually the very definition of sin. Sin isn't so much about doing wrong or doing something bad. In fact, that has nothing to do with sin. Sin is about forgetting others, particularly the poor, the marginalized, and solely seeking our own gain, pleasure, and prosperity, often at the expense of others. We experience true freedom when we live for others, when we seek not only to do the good, but to show love and mercy as God shows it. Then we will discover our true self purpose. In living for others, we become like God, for God always gives of God's self for the life of the world. So too shall we. Then we truly become in the image and likeness of God. Now, to be fair, that way of life that Jesus calls us to is a difficult way of life. In fact, I once came across a tale in which a man is praying to God and the man says, Lord, I thank you for letting me to live life well and to not get into any fights with anybody and to treat others right. Now, Lord, I ask you, help me to get up and begin my day. It's hard. Yes, it would be easier if we had to do, if we only had to do was to treat others as we wish to be treated. That's easy. Anybody can do that. It's much more difficult, however, to, be go, to go beyond that, to sacrifice some of our wants and desires so that all can have life. And that's key. We're all about life for all, not just ourselves, but for all. And many of us felt that these past two years. Yet it is painful, yes, it is painful for us to limit our interactions with others. And many of us had to wait in long lines in order to get vaccines. But those simple acts, those simple acts, enabled others to live. Those small sacrifices ensured the pandemic wouldn't kill thousands, if not millions more. So my friends, we're called not simply to do the good and to treat others as we would like to be treated. Rather, we are to love all God's people as God would love them. We are to give without measuring the cost and to love without expecting others to love us in return. That is what Jesus did. So ought we. Amen.